but they better actually be here. Oh, oh yeah! Yeah, they're here! Oh yeah! Hey everyone, this is what it looks like at my house at sunrise. I couldn't sleep after 5.30 in the morning today because I was so excited, like a kid at Christmas morning, and I'll tell you why. I've got new fish coming. The shipment I'm so patiently waiting for, okay, not so patiently waiting for, is going to include new additions to both of my big tanks. So let me show you where they're going and update you on a few things I've been working on. There is going to be one new guy in my 240 gallon African cichlid tank, which actually just had a new addition. This big guy here, he's my second fur cicada. And since my first one, who is much smaller by the way, is called Furk, this one is called Furk the Second. He is about 12 inches long, by far my biggest fish. He was getting beat up and a fish friend of mine wondered if I could give him a new home. So far he loves it here. Welcome to your new home, big guy. The African cichlid coming today is actually a replacement for one who died of mysterious causes not too long ago, Raphael. Went to bed when everything was great and woke up to see him dead. No signs of bullying or disease, so I figured he must have died of natural causes or violently bumped into the aquarium panels during the night. Anyway, I'm excited for the new guy. Now on to the other tank, my 180 gallon American cichlid tank. This baby here is a setup that I've been really excited about, but it's also sort of been eating away at me, and I'll get to that. I absolutely love the fish in here. I'm going for an all veil fin angelfish setup with seven red-headed tapahos. We're actually just starting to get some color. Look at these cute little guys. I love how they sift the sand and dart around. They're going to be like rainbows when they grow up. I am choosing to go all veil fin angelfish simply because they are leagues more beautiful than their standard angelfish counterparts. Those standards look like red-headed stepchildren in the angelfish world. No slight intended to you, red-headed Tapahos. Seriously though, way ugly compared to these beauties in my opinion. Oh, if you have standard angels in your tank, what I meant to say was standard angels are absolutely stunning. And speaking of stunning, I would be absolutely stunned if you would give that like button a punch if you're enjoying this video so far. And now for what's eating me about this aquarium. Okay, something wicked this way comes. Just look at the water, discolored and cloudy. The centerpiece driftwood in this tank was soaked in hot water for several weeks until it looked clear to me when I drained it. I would drain it and add new hot water several times during the day. A real pain in the butt. When I added it to the tank, you could see tannins discoloring the water within a day. I thought I could just deal with the tannins, but it's really gotten to me. I ordered some Puritan to clear it up, but then I thought of something else. I've wanted something from Aqua Decor for some time. They make artificial backgrounds and decor. But it's so expensive. I never did it. But now, I'm going to be forking out the dough and get what I really want. And that means the beautiful driftwood and all these great artificial plants are going bye-bye. We're looking at a month or so before I make the change, so stay tuned for that. This is where four of my five new fish will be living eventually, by the way. And wait till you see them. And speaking of seeing them, shouldn't they be here by now? Oh, I still have a couple of hours. Well, I might as well do something productive. Water change. There, while that's going, let me show you how I set up my quarantine tanks. This is where the Americans are going to reside for a while. They said a quarantine for four weeks, but I can never make it past two. Anyway, this here's a 10 gallon that I've never even bothered to remove the sticker from. I just use a little sponge filter that will take care of filtration while also providing surface agitation to oxygenate the water. Without oxygen, everyone dies. And that's not where I'm hoping to go with this whole thing. This is my extra Eheim heater, keeping the new guys nice and cozy. And just to the right, that wire with the sensor at the end of it, that's connected to the temperature controller. I have it set to 80 degrees. When the temp drops to 79, it allows the power to the heater, which brings it back to 80. Then the controller deprives it of power again. This reduces the chance of having unexpectedly boiled fish in your tank. I think my newbies are going to want a few plants to keep from getting too bored while they're in prison. Oh, don't forget this stuff to condition the water. Uh-uh, just a dash. Time to steal some filter media from one of the FX6s. Now I don't keep that sponge filter in one of my tanks or it would already be seeded with beneficial bacteria. The reason I don't keep one active is because they are ugly, ugly. Here's what I'm after, gold nuggets. 
riddled with beneficial bacteria from the poop machine African cichlids. This'll do the trick just fine. Then I'll just replace what I took with unseeded media. Kind of like when Indiana Jones stills the idol and replaces it with sand. Except this works. Then I always want to put this media where it'll get the most water flow through it. Usually that'll be your filter. I just rest mine on the sponge filter and it's always worked like a charm. My UPS tracking says they're still out for delivery, but it's been hours since I got up. It's supposed to be delivered before noon, so I guess that's fine. I'll just relax and watch a movie. Difficult to relax. Maybe I'll just check the front porch. Maybe they came and the site didn't update. Nope. Try again. Nope. And again. Nope. Where are they? Wait, what's this? It says they're finally here. Well, they better actually be here. Oh, oh yeah! Yeah, they're here! Oh yeah! Finally, the moment I've been waiting for. Careful. And here's their heating packet. And thank you, Imperial Tropicals. I've only ordered from them once before, and that was for my first batch of African cichlids, and that was a wonderful experience. Hopefully this is too. And here's number one. That's right, folks. Black Veil Fin Angelfish. Wrong side. Another one looking good. They don't even look really stressed out right now. Another one. I'm gonna have four of these black veil fin angelfish in my aquarium now. I don't know if I'll keep all four or rehome one or two, but the plan is to keep all four. And here is Raphael's replacement project. So I'm gonna float these guys for about 15 minutes since they look like they're doing okay in their bags. If there was any distress, serious distress, I would just open the bag and plop and drop them right in without acclimating them. But in this case, it's not looking too bad. Now, this thick skin oblique dense is looking a little bit stressed. I'm going to go ahead and put some more plants in here. On second thought, I thought he might want to have a few more hiding places. This tank doesn't have too many fish in it, just a couple of lethranops, which are really peaceful, but it also has an OB that only has one eye named Brutus. And Brutus really has a hard time even finding his lunch, let alone another fish, but I'm gonna play it safe and make sure this guy has a lot of hides. Now I'm checking on him again, and it looks like this thick skin is having a little bit of stress going on. I'm seeing some twitching happening, but it looks like it's not anything too serious that I have to emergency evacuate him from the bag. So I'm gonna put some stress guard in, which I would have done anyway. I'm doing that to the angels as well. Okay, 15 minutes is up. So I'm getting the thick skin oblique ends out of his bag. And I just use a plop and drop. So he goes right into the net. The water does escape, so I don't put any of that water from the distributor into my tank. And it looks like he's doing fine. So now onto the angelfish. Now I did make a mistake here by putting him into a net, which I will encounter shortly. But what I hadn't anticipated was that his fins would get stuck in the net. So I tried to plop and drop him in here, but I had a hard time getting him out of the net. And I only had one hand, so I couldn't really get a good video of this. Really struggling to get him out of that net.
and I failed to capture the rest of them on video, but I just plopped them into my hand. And then I put them into the tank carefully with my hand only. That way their fins weren't getting stuck in the mesh. So back to the Africans, I'm gonna just go ahead and give them a little food just in case, kind of soothe their nerves a little bit, just in case they're troubled by this new guy. They'll be too busy trying to get their food and they'll feel nice and full afterwards, maybe less aggressive. Especially Brutus. It looks like a villain from a Disney movie, kind of with that one eye missing. It's not really missing, it's just severely damaged. Angels are all looking okay. They're breathing a little heavy, but that's fine. And I did notice that these guys have some red eyes, which I had seen in photos, but I forgot that they might have red eyes, which I think is absolutely wonderful. One of them has a little bit of a hook on the end of his fin, and I kind of actually like that. I'm gonna put some stability in this tank. Give him a little extra bacteria boost. Look at these guys. They're gonna look fantastic in my 180 gallon. Especially when I make my updates to it. And it looks like Eduardo, which has become his name, my wife has named him Eduardo, has found a nice little place to hide from Brutus. Now here they are a week later. Eduardo isn't afraid of anything. And check this out, he's got an appetite. Oh my. Be sure and let me know in the comments if you've had any really good experiences or really bad experiences with getting new fish. And the angels are looking good. Nice deep black bodies with those gorgeous red eyes. Feeding time. It's great to see them attacking that food. They're gonna love it in that 180 gallon. Just one more week. Keep an eye out for that video. Life sure is good. <laughs>